Let us help you reach your peak in retirement. It's time for Retirement Elevated with Sean Lee. Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. It's Retirement Elevated with Sean Lee and myself. And we're going to talk about planning process this go around here on the podcast. It's important to be able to recognize the difference between an advisor who actually has a planning process and one that just gives sales pitches all day long. And so we're going to dive into some of those signs. Sean, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Just another day. Yeah. We are taping this the day after the Super Bowl and on Valentine's Day. So I hope you are prepared, good sir, for that lovely life, wife of yours uh, <laughs> later today. Always. Oh, yeah. Very good. Do you have a good, uh, did you enjoy the Super Bowl? I, it was a good game. Yeah. I mean, that's the the wrong team came out on top, in my opinion, but it's all good. Yeah. I was fine with either team winning. There's definitely a few ticky tack calls, but that's almost always the case, isn't it? Yeah. It's always I, something like that. You know, I... I'd like to see the young team win, but I, I do like Aaron Donald. And so, yeah, yeah. And as I, you and I were chatting, I'm a long suffering Lions fan. So the fact that Stafford left the Lions and immediately went to the Super Bowl with the team has got to sting the Lions just a little bit at the ownership level. But uh, as fans were like, hey, man, this guy suffered in Siberia for 10 years. So, yeah. <laughs> or whatever it was. So, uh, but anyway, so hopefully everybody enjoyed their game. Hopefully everybody has a great Valentine's Day if you go in for that sort of thing. So we're going to talk about this planning process. Like I said, Sean, uh, let's talk about you know the process versus the sales pitch. What are some signs an advisor is more focused on selling than planning? Give me a couple things. You know, I, I think that unfortunately our industry gets a, a little bit of a black eye when it comes to financial planning, financial services, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of this that goes on. It's if all I have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail right. type mentality. Right. And really, some of the things that you should look out for as a as a consumer, as somebody who's going to meet with an advisor, you know, you sit down with them, and very early in the conversation, the tools start to come out, the the latest and greatest product recommendations start to come out, mm -hmm. and they start talking about the features and benefits of a, of this magical product or whatever it is, very very early on. Yeah, they don't really know you that well yet, right? Right. It's Hey, it's nice to meet you, but I got this magical account. Yeah. Well, there is no magical <laughs> right. account. Have I got something for you? I yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the product recommendations really come out early uh, in, in those initial discussions. Uh, the second one is that that individual is not really gathering much information about you and your goals. It's, they're not asking about what your goals, beliefs, values, and desires are. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to get an idea of what makes you tick as an individual okay. and really what your priorities are when it comes to money. Gotcha. And, and then the last thing, it, and, and this happens you know, very early on, and, and I, we take our clients through a, and prospects through an evaluation process, mm -hmm. but literally pointing out the bad things that they're currently doing and only talking about the good things that they're recommending. So you, you look at this idea and you say, well, uh, you're doing this. You're doing it all wrong. Here's why you should do it a different way. And here's the the only way that you can do it without giving you the good, the bad, the ugly of any decision that you could make. Right. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense because, you know, somebody's coming in and they're, they're not a professional, obviously, and say, okay, hey, look, I see what you're trying to do. You know, these things are working, but these things aren't. So let's talk about why. And then we'll start to make those adjustments, right? Mm -hmm. Versus just saying, well, you know, you don't know what you're doing and that's why you need me. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. So run us through the retirement elevated process then, you know, what you guys do at Elevated Retirement Group. And uh, when somebody comes through the door for the first time, just kind of walk us through a quick overview of that. Uh, you know, I, I, we joke about this in our office a lot and I'm boring and methodical. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, that's, I, when, that's not, to me, that sounds like a good trait though for this type of industry, right? I want, I want somebody who's going to, you know, hey man, X's and O's, get it, you know, check them oh. off. We don't change our process. We don't. It doesn't matter if somebody has a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred million. Right. Uh, our process stays the same. It's boring. It's methodical, uh, but it allows for individuals and families to make decisions that are unique to them and make decisions based on on facts and logic rather than the emotions of uh, of money. And so really our whole process, and this is all written out, and, and we're one of those few firms that are out there that have a clearly defined written process. So we can set expectations along the way of how our relationship works with families and, and then how they, they can see what those progression of steps are. So our, our first discussion is really a strategy session. It's, it's let's sit down. Let's get a good handle on your goals, beliefs, values, and desires when it comes to money. 
Let's talk about what's most important about money to you, what you want to accomplish, uh, what you're looking for in an advisor. We don't ask a lot of the financial questions in this meeting. Uh, reason is we, if somebody comes to meet with us, we we ask that there's a personal profile filled out in advance. So I don't have to ask, well, what's your social security benefit? What's That's just basic data that we can, we can have filled out beforehand. Right. But we can really go through what makes an individual tick and what they're really looking to accomplish with the money that they have. And we walk through a little bit about how our relationship works. Well, you know, I imagine you've been doing this a long time, right? So I imagine through your years, the process has changed. So what would you say, like, is there anything that you kind of like, um, yeah, I'm so glad that I've, I've been doing this a while because I've tweaked this or I've gotten better at this. Do you feel as though that you've made, you know, I mean, you have to have made strides, right? Yeah. The biggest tweak that we made was rather than jumping into designing somebody's plan, mm -hmm. Um, without rhyme or reason, we years ago, we decided to add in an evaluation step. And that's our second meeting that the evaluation, I don't give any recommendations. We don't tell you you need to change anything. We don't tell you that you need to make adjustments in the evaluation. It's an as is scenario. And, and what we found is that when we do an evaluation, we can really get down to what's going on inside somebody's plan from the five areas of planning, whether it's income, investments, tax, healthcare, or estate. And our job in that meeting is to, is to walk through the areas that are, that are doing well, the areas that are a little bit of concern, and the areas that we would recommend making adjustments on. Gotcha. At that point, it's up to each individual to de determine, do we want to make adjustments based on what we're seeing? Okay. And, and so, you know, after all these years of doing this, um, you know, this is not really on my list of things to ask you, but do you feel like if you could go back and give yourself some advice, would you give yourself that advice sooner to say, Hey, change this process or, or there'd be mm. something that you would tell your, your, your first year self versus your current self? For sure. Cause I mean, you look at adding that step in, there's really a, kind of the unknown, should I make changes or shouldn't I? You right. Know, if, if we meet with somebody one time and then we come and we have all these recommendations, mm -hmm. there's really kind of this level of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Should I take these recommendations and should I move forward? Well, by going through an evaluation, getting a, you know, clear cut answers on, on what your current situation looks like. Right. Now you can make decisions based on, okay, I like what where my current plan is. I think maybe I should make some adjustments here or there. It's all it's all based on, you know, a process to to build facts and logic in and, and understand where you currently sit and then determining if where you what you're currently doing, if that's going to get you where you ultimately want to be. Yeah, and I think part of the folly of our youth, right, is we always feel like we have to be doing something, right? So I imagine earlier on in your career, it's like I've got to be doing something. I, I've got to, you know, to to make this valuable, to make this seem like I'm, you know, it's worth my them to be hiring me. I've got to be always doing something. And as we age, we like, you know, it's okay to actually stop for a minute and listen, right? Mm -hmm. Take that information and listen, think about it, process it, you know, and and come up with the best, you know, the best strategy possible. Versus when we're younger, we're just like go go go, right? right? So I think that's probably a good way of thinking about that as well. So we'll just kind of wrap this off since we were just talking about the planning process and keeping it simple this week on the podcast. Is there something unique besides what you've already shared with us about your guys' process, or is there something about the experience that you're over, you know, particularly proud of? Yeah, I think that what we're most proud of is that it's it's not our ultimate plan. By designing and building plans and doing the evaluation the, the way that we do, mm -hmm. it's all based on the family that's sitting across the table at us. And a lot of advisors will say that, but you know, our process is specifically designed to build a unique customized plan based off of the individual ahead of us the individual that's sitting across the table with really no agendas and we're independent. We don't, I don't care if somebody wants to use an annuity or manage money or life insurance or mutual funds or whatever. It doesn't matter to us. Ultimately our job is to, is to create the framework of a plan and then guide in individuals through making a, a very well thought out and informed decision where based on where they want to put their money. Yeah. Well, and as part of what you do, right, the gratifying part, I imagine for, I talk to a lot of advisors and typically it's like, hey, the, the gratifying part for our job, because 
you know, we try to have a good time on the podcast. We try to keep things a little bit light. But what you do is very serious stuff. You're dealing with people's, you know, forever money and their their nest egg. And so when that light bulb moment when they get it and it's all clicking and everything is starting to run smoothly, that's got to be the, the cool, gratifying part. Like, okay, this person gets it now and they feel comfortable. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to see that that education has happened. Yeah, exactly. And, and determining on where and how their plan is going to work based on what their comfort level is. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's everybody's a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. But what you need and what I need are totally different, right? Well, that's exactly it. And and if you're looking at how to create income, there's only even though everybody's different, there's only three ways to do it. You yep. can do it protected, you can do it on the market, or you can do a combination of the two. That's really that's really it. Once you know who you are as an individual, and you've gone through a process to determine who you are as an individual, the planning then falls into place. Yeah, and it might sound weird to say that, right? Because you're like, "Well, hey, we're coming in as a as an older person. We're getting close to retirement. I know who I am as an individual." But often, it's who are we as a financial individual, mm-hmm. right? It's that financial aspect of our life. And we kind of think we know, but once sometimes when we go through these processes, we find out, wow, maybe that's not exactly who I am after all. Or that person has changed as we start to wind down those working years. So if you need to go through that planning process or want to go through that planning process or really haven't gone through a detailed one like that, and you're not already working with Sean and the team, definitely reach out to him, give him a jingle, stop by the website, elevatemyretirement.com. That's elevatemyretirement.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you like to use. You can find all that information there as well. You can find it at the podcasting website, also retirementelevatedpodcast.com. That's retirementelevatedpodcast.com. And we'll have the the links in the show note descriptions as usual. So thanks so much for hanging out with us here on the podcast. We appreciate your time as always. Sean, thanks for hanging out, my friend. I hope you have a lovely Valentine's Day. Thanks, brother. Talk to you soon. We'll see you next time here on the show. This is Retirement Elevated with Sean Lee, Managing Partner at Elevated Retirement Group, 855-50-RETIRE. Investment advisory services offered through Elevated Capital Advisors, LLC, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor.